Welcome to the Boat Buyer's Secret Weapon video series. I am your host, Captain Matt, and today we're talking how to buy a used boat in the state of Michigan. As always, we're brought to you by Boat Buyer's Secret Weapon and the Boat Buyer's Secret Weapon Toolkit. Uh, you can go to BoatBuyerSecretWeapon.com and grab a copy there for free. Today, we're going to talk about how to spot a scam. Um, every state has their own unique issues. Michigan is a, a large boating state, one of the top 10 in the country. So we're going to talk about scams. We're going to talk about common issues for sale, for sale by owner boats, options to consider, how to avoid someone else's headache, which I think is one of the most important aspects of what we'll cover today, must-do inspections, finance and insurance tips, and a free gift at the end. So in some research done a couple of years ago, um, they found that one in seven boats that was listed on Craigslist has a major issue or was an outright scam. Now, Craigslist is where you'll find the most of these issues, but they can happen on Boat Trader, and the type of issues that they found can happen just with the for sale by owner. Um, you don't see them as often with dealers, but they can happen. And they can be things like a, a boat that's being sold as is, um, but has a salvage title, or the name on the title doesn't match the seller, and when you go to sell it yourself, they have some issues. Uh, no titles. The boat was um, the boat has has sunk at some point, had a major insurance claim, uh, and maybe was totaled out. Um, an outright scam. There are there are people that will take photos of boats for sale off Boat Trader, grab those photos, and then put a listing up themselves. So it's a real boat in your area, but the wrong person's trying to sell it. And they're just trying to get a couple hundred dollars or thousand dollars out of you for a deposit. And I want you to avoid those. So some of the things we're going to talk about is going to address those directly. And here are some, some signs. I call these red flags. It's not if you see one of these to run and, and, and walk away completely. But the more you see, the more your guard should go up. So the first is they don't have any way to contact by phone as you're going through the process. They're only communicating an email, and the email grammar is extremely poor. Now, you'll notice my grammar is not the best. Um, so it's it's not automatically a Nigerian prince trying to sell you the boat, but it's a red flag, and you need to wait before any money is given. If they ask for upfront money, guess what? That's another red flag. Um, unless they're a local boat dealer or a boat dealer that has a physical presence that you know are going to be there when you get there. Even if they offer an escrow service, there have been stories of um, somebody saying, well, we'll just use an escrow service. Here, this is the escrow service. Put the money in there, and it ends up just being a front website where they take the money through what looks to be an escrow service, and the seller runs off with the cash. Those are a little bit more elaborate, um, but they do happen. So if you want to go the escrow route, you choose the escrow company. Escrow.com is one of the biggest ones. Um, and one that you, both sides can be comfortable with because it's a, a legitimate company. Now, if they won't allow you to inspect the boat, hey, I'm I'm out of the country. Um, I, I can't get to it. Uh, oh, it's it's tucked away and it's it's going to be difficult. Whatever their reason, if you can't inspect the boat, even if you're getting the smoking hot deal, it may be too big of a headache to move forward. Not always. There are people that have, have bought a boat sight unseen and came out like a bandit and made great money. Uh, got a boat that was that was really devalued. Um, they used it for a couple years, sold it, and make a lot of money. It can happen. Just it's a red flag. There's no title or the titles in a different name. They don't quite match up. That can be an issue when you give the money, and then you go to the state of Michigan to register your boat, your motor, your trailer. If there's a, a difference they may decline your title application and now you're stuck with the boat that's not titled if the seller is not available to you guess what now you're in big trouble and most of the time once the money is exchanged hands sellers are a lot less responsive um, it has water damage the boat had sank that's another one that you can check for a water line if it's a, an io an inboard outboard or an inboard you can check that water line in the engine compartment to see was there water damage has the has has this boat sank at some point or they won't allow a sea trial i personally would never buy a boat without a sea trial new or used uh it's one of the the most important pieces 
to make sure that you're not stuck with someone else's headache. There's some more that we'll cover there. In the state of Michigan, you can expect, we, we did a video on the total cost of boat ownership, um, which goes into a little bit more detail, but this is strictly for Michigan. You got a 6% sales tax. Um, if you're making a trade, it is the sales price less the trade amount. So if you're buying a $100,000 boat, you're trading in a $25,000 boat, you only pay 6% sales tax on the $75,000 difference. Registration fee, depending on the length, $19 to $448. There's no yearly property tax. And if the boat is used in Michigan waterways for over 60 days in a 365-day period of time, uh, they will ask for that 6% sales tax. So keep that in mind the first year that you're operating the boat. Um, that it will, the, that sales tax, they may request it. Um, if you get caught with that, uh, they also will expect registration fees. And you can go to michigan.gov dash, uh, that whole line there. And you can get more details. That's where I pulled this information. Remember, this is not legal or tax advice. This is just helpful information, uh, to make buying a boat easier. And so you find the right boat at the best price. Now, if you were born June 30th, 1996 or after, you do um, have a requirement for boater's education certificate. You got to take a boater's education class, pass a test. You can get more details at that, michigan.gov slash DNR. Um, and that whole long URL, you can just search Michigan Boater's Education. And um, there are some outside sources that do it. There are also some government sources that do it county by county. Um, and they do have some online options as well. Uh, but that's something that you will need to operate a boat um, if you were born after June 30th, 1996. Now, one of the first things you have to make a decision on is what type of boat you're going to buy. Deck boat, bow rider, pontoon, uh, wake boat, uh, cruiser, cuddy cabin, speed boat, bass boat, aluminum fishing boat. Um, whatever the boat type is, that's your first choice. If you're a first-time boater, we have a video for first-time boat buyers. Um, it's actually a two-part video. We go into details on everything. So I highly encourage you to check that one out if you are a first-time boat buyer um, and you really want to get into everything that could potentially be available. Um, the second is what type of power source? You want a stern drive, an outboard, a direct drive? Um, do you want an inboard? Uh, what are the advantages? Do you want a jet boat? We've done a video on drives as well. So there's a video out there that, that talks about jet drives outboards, stern drives, and inboards, the differences, the advantage, the pros and cons, who would want what, and that's a great video. I just got a long email earlier today from the guy saying, man, I've watched several of your videos. It's been awesome. Here's a couple questions I have, and we'll get, I'll get back to him, probably make a video from his, um, he was looking at a used jet boat, and uh, that's, it's great to hear that from our subscribers. Um, options. Now, I'll talk about options in a very general sense, so I don't know what type of boat you're looking at. We've got videos for center consoles, for pontoons and tritunes, for aluminum fishing boats, uh, for deck boats and bow riders and all of that. When you're making the choice on options, there are some options that they're either there or they're not. So like the walkthrough, you want a walkthrough or a sun pad on a bow rider or a deck boat. Once you buy that boat, that's what it is. You're not changing it. There are other options that a boat can have or not have, but you can add them on. But you want to understand the expense associated with it. So a bimini top. You may want a bimini top to give you some shade, some cover in the hot summer sun. Well, a bimini top is something that if it's on the boat, great. Check it for condition. Make sure it's in good shape. If it's not, you can add one, but it may be 300 to 2,000, maybe even more depending on the size of your boat and the type of your boat. And you'll want to know that that expense is going to be there. So when you're comparing two boats, one has a bimini top, the other doesn't. Well, guess what? The If you want the one to have a bimini top that doesn't, that's going to cost an extra grand or two or three um, to get it there. Same thing with the canvas cover. A canvas cover can be $500. It can be $5,000 depending on the type of cover and the size of the boat. A wakeboard tower can be something that you can add to most fiberglass boats, but not all but they're expensive to do them the right way. Um, you know, $2,500 to $10,000 to have a, a wakeboard tower added to a boat. So if you're comparing one versus another, and the one with the tower is only three grand more, guess what? That's probably a better deal than the one without the tower, especially if it was put on on the factory, because factory installed towers 
are more structurally stable um, and won't cause cosmetic damage like some of the aftermarket wakeboard towers that are on the cheaper side. Um, head compartment, toilet, porta potty. Sometimes you can add a porta potty in there if it's got a little head compartment, um, but you may not have that option. So those are things to think about before you get into the details of this is my boat. Think about what do I all want and not want. And again, go to some of the other videos and your specific style. We get into it more. Now, once you have found the boat in Michigan, you've got to make sure that you have a sturdy floor. In the 90s, early 2000s, they were still using uh, plywood floors. And guess what happens? They absorb moisture. Uh, they can start rotting. They can start causing the stringers to rot, which are the structural support of the boat. Um, and before the 2000s, they just left those as raw wood. Now they've, they've started encapsulating them in foam, uh, encapsulating them in fiberglass, protecting them better. So you want to lightly bounce around um, up in the bow, uh, in by the seats, especially by the ski locker, if there's a ski locker, in the transom where people board the boat, and just make sure that you're not going to be stuck with a major project. It can be expensive. It can be, um, it's a dirty, messy project to do by yourself. Very difficult to do. Um, and uh, something you want to know. The fiberglass bottom. If you're buying a fiberglass boat, you want to check the bottom for uh, blisters. Uh, that's going to be an indication that the boat's been left in the water for long periods of time. Not the kiss of death, but something that you want to know. That would also lead me to check the drive and the bellows and, and check the, um, on a, a stern drive, check that portion to make sure there's no major maintenance or repair issues that I need to be aware of. Electronics, stereo, lights, gauges, switches, upholstery, canvas, hatches, latches, wire corrosion. Here's my guiding principle when I'm looking at a used boat for sale is I want to know everything that's wrong with the boat so I can then make a decision with everything that's wrong with this boat, am I willing to pay this amount of money for it? There's not a single boat, even if it's three weeks old, that doesn't have something wrong with it. Even there's been new boats delivered off the showroom floor that have things wrong with it because it's so easy to get a scratch or a, a nick or um, something happened to the, to the canvas or who knows what it is. Just because there's something wrong with the boat doesn't mean it's not a smart decision to buy it. It means at that price, is it a smart decision to buy it? And you are the one that can answer that question. You want to check all of those things because all of those things, canvas we talked about can be a couple hundred dollars to a couple thousand dollars for a new canvas cover. Upholstery, you know, can be repaired with a hundred dollar repair, or it could be a three thousand um, dollar new upholstery job. Wiring and corrosion, that could get to be very expensive. If you have an older boat that has wiring issues, finding those wiring issues, diagnosing it, and fixing it can be expensive. You want to know that up front. Then you want to ask the question, how old is the fuel, and when's the last time this boat's been run? When you're looking at a mechanical um, engine, a boat needs to be run on a consistent basis. It gets the oil through. Um, the fuel needs to be run. Fuel that sits for a year or two, especially if it's ethanol, um, can cause major problems if it sits for two years and then you go to run it. And the phase separation happens. It gets contaminants in it. The octane level goes down and you can cause issues. You may need to, if the fuel is a year or you know two years old, you may need to pump it out and put in fresh. You may have issues with fuel lines. Last time it's run. It may be a perfect boat. The outside looks great. The canvas looks great. The upholstery looks great. And it's man, it's been tucked in the barn for five years. And you're like, oh my gosh, it's a steel. I've got a great steel. Well, the negative thing is things could have corroded. Things could have rusted. Things could have seized. Um, the oil has, has drained out of everything. So it could be a big issue. You definitely have to replace the impeller, definitely have to do an oil and fluid change. So just because it looks great doesn't mean that it's it's a great option. So you want to ask when's the last time it was run? When's the last time the oil was changed, the fluids were changed, and the impeller was changed? How old is the battery? Those are things that will be important. Once you get to the engine part, the engine is one of the probably 50% or more of the value of most boats. The older the boat, the more the value it gets to be. You want to find out what's the engine hours, the oil and fluids. You want to ask when they were changed, and then you want to check it yourself. So you can see, oh, it was just changed, and you go and check it, and it's all dirty and burnt up. Well, now everything else the seller says may be a little suspect. Um, if they match up, now we haven't changed it for a couple years, it's dirty. Great, this guy's probably, probably pretty honest. Compression. 
the most important thing to check when you're buying a used boat. Compression is how strong the engine cylinders are firing compared um, to what it was supposed to be doing when it was brand new. So for 20 bucks, you can get a compression tester. You hook it up to each cylinder. You crank it. If you don't know how to do it, you can hire somebody for 100, 200 bucks. In the um, notes in the um, YouTube video, there's a link to Amazon, a bunch of compression testers. That would be a great option for you. And, and you can do it yourself if you're mechanically inclined. What you're looking for is that those cylinders are firing as strong as they should be and that they're all within a, a relatively level line, about 5-10% of each other uh, with the compression, the PSI, the pounds per square inch per cylinder. Uh, you know, maybe 120 PSI per cylinder of what it was new. So you check each cylinder. Now it can, the boat can look great, but if it overheated, if, um, if they didn't winterize, you've got a crack in the block, there's something happen. Everything else can look great, but that compression can be off and it can happen. Um, and, and maybe the seller doesn't even realize it. Uh, I, I've seen it happen with a, a boat that was about five years old, looked great, ran great. Um, put the compression on it, and guess what? There was a cylinder that was low, put a couple people on the boat, and now you can finally feel it. Um, and, and that's something that I helped a, um, a potential boat buyer avoid that issue uh, because I encouraged them to get the, com the compression done. Prop condition, you want to spin that propeller, make sure that the drive shaft is straight, um, make sure the prop shaft is straight, and also make sure that you check the condition of the prop. There's no major dings. Um, or, or, or bends or, or gouges in it and the drive condition if it's a stern drive make sure that that gear casing is nice and smooth um, check the zincs and the anodes if it's been left in the water kind of check the condition of that check the bellows and we are going to be making a video of that uh, very soon so that we can actually show you here's how you inspect uh, a stern drive here's how you inspect an outboard um, and, and we are working on that. So make sure you subscribe to the channel uh, so you can get that update when it comes out. Now, once you have done the engine inspection, it's time to do the test drive, the demo, the sea trial, whatever you want to call it. I prefer to start it cold, which means they put it in the water and you're the first one to start it for the day. You get a better sense of how the engine cranks. Um, is there issues? Is the battery dead? Does it not fire up? Does it take a long time? may not be big deals but now you know if the battery's dead well crap i gotta spend 150 bucks on a new battery um start it up listen to it idle for a couple of minutes how does it sound is it spitting and sputtering is it idling really high is it cutting off or does it sound the way it should um once you do that untie the dock lines go idle out to open water go from when you're in the open water from idle to wide open throttle just put the hammer down see how it feels how does it sound does it take right off is there does it hesitate is there anything that doesn't feel right wide open throttle for a minute or two come back to about three quarters throttle now you're going to do some turns now if you are not a safe boat operator if you don't know how to drive a boat maybe bring somebody that does make sure that um, that you're being safe make sure that you're a competent driver um, and, and run about three quarters throttle for each boat's going to be different depending on the type of boat that you run. Uh, if it's got triples on it and it goes 80 miles an hour, maybe come back to half throttle. But three quarters is good for most boats. And you're going to do some turns to the left, to the port and starboard. And you're going to do those tight turns. How does it feel? Is it easy to turn? Is it hard to turn? Maybe an indication of a, a steer, steering cable that's off. Does something happen that, that's off? You want to run those maneuvers so you can feel how the boat handles and you can make sure that it's running right. If it has trim, you want to adjust the trim, the trim tabs. If it has trim tabs, how does it feel? Does it operate properly? Then you want to come back to neutral. You just want to sit in the middle of the water and then you're going to go in gear, forward, neutral, reverse. You just can count one, two, three. So neutral, one, two, three. Forward, one, two, three. Neutral, one, two, three. Reverse, one, two, three. Neutral, one, two, three. And what you're listening for is how does it go in and out of gear? Does it shift smoothly? Or is, there, is it really difficult to shift it, which may be an indication that you need a new um, cable for the shifter? Is it a fly-by-wire, uh, which means it's a digital throttle and shift? Well, does it perform properly? Is it clunking really bad? 
Some of the stern drives have a little bit of a clump to them. That's not a big deal. But if something sounds off, then you want to raise your hand and say, okay, is this something I need to get checked out? Is this a boat I should walk away from? Or is that normal operating for this type of, of engine or drive? And then if it's an outboard, you want to look for that water spitting out a little pee hole. Um, if you're sitting at idle, it may just be dribbling out. When you're underway, uh, it should be a nice steady stream. And again, that's indicative of a poor impeller, which is why you want to ask about that impeller when the last time it was changed. And I would encourage if it hasn't been changed and they don't have documentation that's been changed in the last year, when you're buying a used boat, just plan on changing the impeller, the oil, the gear lube, and the battery to start out the gate. So you're not left stranded uh, your first couple times out. It, it, it is um, money well spent, in my opinion, for peace of mind. Now, if you're buying the trailer with the boat, during the demo, the sea trial is a great time. Tie that boat up at the ramp. Go to the trailer, inspect it while the boat's off the trailer, check the winch stands, the straps, the lights, the bunks, the axles and bearings, and the tires. There's been stories of axles breaking, of bearings burning up while on the trip home from buying the boat, even from dealers, and the tires. Check for bald spots, check for dry rot, um, check the age of the tires. We did a whole video on trailers. You can watch that, get all the details. Um, trailer tires are 150 bucks each, so if you got a dual axle trailer, you know, you're looking at um, 600 bucks for new tires. Um, you want to know that type of thing. And you certainly don't want to blow a tire on your way home or your first year, um, your first year with your new boat. Financing. We did a whole video on financing. You want to check that out. Uh, on used boats, credit unions are the best. Typically, if you're buying from a dealer, check with the dealer's lenders. Local national banks typically have the worst terms, uh, the highest down payments, and the highest rates. But you can always check with them and check marine lenders. We have a couple listed on our site, which you can check with. But um, but watch that video if you're going to be financing insurance. If you're buying a typical uh, pleasure boat, your insurance is going to be $500 to $1,200 per year. The faster the boat, um, the larger the boat, the more expensive the boat, you may be above that $1,200 per year. Uh, we've got an uh, opportunity to get a free insurance quote. On the site, you can go BoatBuyerSecretWeapon.com and check that out. Um, there's also a whole video on boat insurance because boat insurance, they the premiums can vary, but also the coverage. A lot of times, if you select the right type of, of marine insurance, you can get better coverage for a cheaper price uh, when you choose the, prep, the proper uh, insurance provider. And again, you can check out um, that information on uh, the website. Boat History Report. We talked about some of the scams. We talked about um, the issues with title. We talked about the salvage titles and the, the boats that have had um, have had major insurance claims. Uh, there's a company called Boat History Report that for like 50 bucks or so, um, you can get a history report on any boat motor um, combination and they will, hey, here's the history of that based on all of the records that they were able to gain access to. Uh, and, and for me, for a $50 investment, it's a great peace of mind, a great insurance policy that you're not going to have one of those issues that kind of snuck up on you. Um, and a lot of times, if a dealer is selling the boat, they may provide this as a free service. But again, for $50, I think it's a, a wise decision. You can click. There's a link in the um, there's a link down below the video on YouTube or on the website where you can go directly to that. Uh, we get a small referral fee from it. Uh, but all of the links for everything we've talked about is down below um, in, the, uh, in the notes. So mention, if you stick with us, there was a free gift. You can get the Boat Buyer's Secret Weapon Toolkit, um, which again, I just got that long email from a guy that was looking at buying a jet boat. He said it's been a huge help to him. All the videos have been incredibly helpful. And this toolkit uh, will really keep you on the right track so you don't miss something. And again, my my goal is to make sure you find the right boat at the best price. Uh, I talked about how to demo the right way, so you got a checklist there for you. Questions asked dealers, private sellers, how to maximize your trade if you've got a trade, best boat loan, best insurance, and much more. And you can get that uh, BoatBuyerSecretWeapon.com slash toolkit. Subscribe to the channel. We're always releasing new videos um, and, uh, and additional fun content. And there's also some additional videos that are recommended for you that you may want to check out. Thanks for watching. And again, remember, life truly is better on a boat.